Hey guys, welcome back. Um, today, we're gonna be doing a top 10 list of my favorite traditional case knife patterns. Um, as you can see, I've got a new background set up here. Um, you know, it's a little different from what you all are used to with my videos. Uh, the place that I was at wasn't getting very good light. And uh, recently I've got some new um, things like lights and uh, different tripods and stuff that I'm using to film these videos with. So I've got different things to use to make your all's videos look better. So yeah, I'm in a different place now. I've got a little bit different of a setup. You can see I've got my Kodiak Hunter set up there. Um, it's very nice. I put it there because it's probably my favorite knife in my collection and I think it's just a perfect centerpiece there to put. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get into this. I won't be uh, putting anything besides traditional case folders in here. As an honorable mention, I'll put the Kodiak as my honorable mention. Like I said, my favorite knife, but not a traditional. So it will not be in the top 10, um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and get into it. First off, we got the case clasp. Um, this specific clasp is a buffalo um, with wood handles. It's got a very nice shape to it, fits in your hand good. Um, it will pinch you with that bolster, but luckily most people won't be carrying this in their front pocket. This can be in a sheath or in your back pocket if you're even gonna carry one of these. Um, but you know, this is one of these that's just hard to find a use for. That's why it's so low on the list. Um, you know, other knives you can normally find a, about a million different things to do with, but this knife is just so big that you, can, you can't you can do a ton of tasks with it. Uh, however, it's still a giant, awesome knife. I just think that's really the reason it's on here is just because it's a really cool knife. Uh, but yeah, that's the case clasp. Uh, you can see it right there. It's beautiful. We'll set it back there. All right, next up will be probably the Barlow. Um, I picked the Barlow for number nine because everyone always puts the Barlow in their top three or maybe their favorite pattern period. Um, for me, I like the Barlow. It's It's got what you need. It's got a nice short uh, clip blade there you can use for just about anything. And if it's too big, you got your pin blade. Um, it's just a little Barlow jack. Um, this knife is beautiful. It's got emerald green bone with the anvil shield um, with this nickel silver bolster. I mean, it's a beautiful knife. It's just for, I, I find myself choosing other patterns over the Barlow, but it's still a beautiful knife. At number nine, we got the canoe. Uh, the canoe is an awesome pattern, as you can tell. It's named canoe because of the shape of the knife. It's shaped just like a canoe. This specific one has the etching of an Indian Rona canoe. Um, it's got a nice big spear point blade on it. This happens to be a CV uh, chromvanadium steel knife. Um, and then it's got a, a nice little pin blade here. So, you know, you can't really go wrong with the canoe. It's got two really nice blades on it. It's just, you know, not my particular favorite but it's still an awesome knife. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty cool knife. Uh, next up, we're gonna do the 47 Stockman. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Stockman's personally. Um, the, the Jumbo Stockman or the Medium Stockman, really any of them. I like Stockman's, but it's just not something that I enjoy as much. However, the 47, there's just something about it. It's just a nice medium sized knife and it's got a big clip point blade on it, a nice sheep's foot blade, and a really rounded off spade blade there, which I really enjoy. You can use this knife for about anything you need to cut. I think it's a perfect knife. Um, it's just, you know, it's not super unique, and that's why it's not in my top five or, you know, top six. But it is still a very pretty knife, and this specific one has the olive green bone with the barn shield handles. Um, it's just an, or sorry, a barn shield with the olive green bone handle. Sorry about that. Um, but the thing that makes this pattern unique is that it has three different springs for each of its three blades. While most Stockmans only have two springs and one, uh, two blades share one spring. But uh, yeah, that's an awesome knife that comes in at number seven. 
Next knife we have up here will be a muskrat. Yes, it didn't make the top five, but for a while now, I've just fell in love with the muskrat. I don't know why, it's just a nice small knife and it has two very usable blades on it. And they are the same blade, but what makes it so great is that they're not big enough to where you can't, you know, use it for everyday small little purposes, but they're not small enough to where you can't use it to cut something or do what you need done with a knife. This specific one has beautiful stack. I think this one is what's kind of drew me to muskrats a lot lately, is having this beautiful stag on this. But I still think that this muskrat is a very neat looking knife and it's very cool that they put the same blade on it as it having, that way if one gets dull, you know, you can just flip to the other and use it before you have to sharpen it. And you're not really losing anything if one goes dull. So that's pretty cool. That will be number six on the ranking. All right, now we're cracking into our top five. We're gonna start off with this one. This is a Cigar Whittler. A Cigar Whittler is a very big pattern knife. Um, as you can see here, it's probably around the same size. It's a little smaller and thinner th than a uh, class, but it's um, just almost the same length. It's got a nice huge spear point blade on it right here, which is perfect for just about anything you need to cut something big you got the you got this nice little spear point um it's got the sheep's foot oh this is actually the pin blade um the pin blade is about the size of most of these big blades uh lengthwise anyway uh so this is for your just medium stuff and then if that goes dull on the other side here you've got a spade blade that is almost almost a pin blade in my opinion with the way they switched it but um yeah, it's just a beautiful knife. And you, you've you got these awesome uh, blades that you can use for just about anything. So there's a Cigar Whittler. <clears throat> Number four, I put the Sawed Buster. Um, this knife is very special to me. This is my first ever case knife. Um, and as you can tell, it's got that Sawed Buster etching on it. Uh, this is in black Delrin handles, but I wanted to show this off first, but the knife I really want to show you all that will capture y'all's vision of a sawed buster is this one. This is a very beautiful knife. It's got this nice stainless blade on it. Look at that blade. That blade is perfect for anything. You know, it's got this awesome handle pretty, and it's a thin knife. It fits in your pocket and you don't even know it's there. So for most people, the sawed buster junior is the perfect EDC knife for me. I agree, I'm gonna be honest, EDC wise, I always take this sod buster with me anywhere I go, that way I can use it, because it works so perfect. Sorry about the noise in the background, my family's going crazy. Um, but yeah, this right here is just a beautiful knife and an awesome EDC carry, but for me, um, it's just not got enough blades for me to be a super interesting pattern. Um, and I'll kind of contradict myself with that a little bit at number one, and you'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's number four. Uh, third up is going to be the baby gun stock. This is going to, you know, surprise a lot of people. I recently bought this knife and it has, you know, entranced me. I love it so much. It's got this awesome little spear point blade with this nice swedge and long pull on it. And it is a little knife. And I've preached a lot about how I just don't even like little knives. And of course, it's got this little pin blade here. But this can fit in your little coin pocket in your jeans easily, or just in your regular pocket and not even notice it. And for me anyways, what I'm doing, what I'm cutting, this gets the job done and I don't even feel it in my pocket. And not just that, in the process of doing all them things, it's a beautiful little knife. And it's the shape of a gun sock. I just think it's a beautiful little knife and perfect for EDCs. Some people disagree with me. They think that the sod buster is, and I, I agree with them. Um, that this is technically the perfect one, but with that knife, you've got two blades, so you can use it. If one goes dull, you can use it for the other. And I don't need a blade as big as a Sawbuster's blade, you know, for what I do. Um, most of the time, I'm just opening cardboard boxes or cutting open toys or just for little kids or, you know, anything random like that. You know, you don't need a huge knife. Um, but yeah, I just think that's cool. All right, number two. 
the Congress. The Congress is an awesome pattern. I think it's very neat and it has four different usable blades that are all very usable. You've got a nice spear point blade right there. You've got a nice long sheep's foot blade. You got a nice coping blade here and an awesome little pin blade here. They're all four different blades. They could have easily just put two spear blades and do pins or vice versa, but they didn't. They decided to go for four different blades that can be used for four different purposes. And if one dulls, you can use one of them blades for the same purpose as the other, which is awesome. It also has indentions in the knife to where you can get your finger in there to that nail nick way easier. Each of these blades also has a long pull, which helps in opening each of the blades where there's so many, um, which is very nice to have. They all, also, all, each blade has their own spring in the knife, which helps a lot with uh, the blade retention and blade strength of these knives. Um, this happens to be in deep purple, bone which I think is beautiful bone but yeah it's an overall awesome knife. Now the only problem with this is the way it is shaped they kind of had to shape it this way with how many blades they wanted in it it's a little little different because this edge of this is kind of comes to a corner kind of pokes you right there when you're trying to cut a little bit not bad nothing that would stop me from buying a congress but just keep that in mind it also while it's in your pocket will kind of pinch you with that corner as well so just be aware of that. And now number one, my favorite knife pattern will have to be the back pocket. It's just an awesome little knife. Well, not little, it's a very big knife. Um, you know, I was just saying earlier, how about how cool the gun stock was? Cause it was small, you know, do every task, but you cannot beat this knife. It's got kind of the same, a similar shape to the Sawbuster, except it's got a lanyard hole, which is awesome to have, and it has half stops and this awesome Skinner blade. Now this Skinner blade on the Sawbuster, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, sorry about that, um, is nice. It, it gets the job done, but the, the edge of it, you know, it's not, it's not that pointy, which I can forgive because a lot of the time I don't, have to have an edge on it but this knife the edge of this knife is sharp it's sharp and it's got a nice swedge in the skinner blade it's just a perfect knife now this one specifically has half stops a lanyard hole and it's got um this nice case collector's club shield on it because it was from the case collector's club um i think it's pretty awesome and i think it's probably my favorite pattern uh just because of how perfectly it's made. And this is also a Tony Bowes uh, pattern. Um, I don't believe there's any other Tony Bowes patterns over here, but I do have some Tony Bowes patterns and they tend, and I'm gonna say tend because it's not always the case, but usually they tend to be well put together. Here's a few of his patterns. You got a teardrop, a sway back, and a tribal lock. Those are just a few of his patterns. Um, you know, as you can tell with the teardrop, it's a very neat knife. Um, just not what I would personally pick to carry every day. It works. I mean, it's it's a good knife. This one has bone stag handles, but you know, just not my personal pick. Uh, the blade isn't fully centered on this one, uh, but it's it's pretty close. It's close enough to where I wouldn't even care. You know, uh, it's not rubbing for me. If the blade's not rubbing, it's fine. Um, but it has half stops, and as you'll find with almost every Tony Bowes, with almost every Tony Bowes pattern that isn't a locking back, it will have a half stop. So the sway back, this is actually a sway back jack. This is another Tony Bowes pattern. I call it watermelon bone. Um, but yes, this has half stops with this Warncliffe blade and with this pin blade. So that's an awesome put together knife, and uh, many people praise the uh, sway back for how well it's put together and mine is put together really well. The centering on it is not very good on this Warncliffe blade, but that's probably because the packaging that it's in, um, that one specifically is in a tin can and it is propped open inside of it. 
So I'm assuming that's what's messed up with it. But this one right here, this is an awesome tribal lock. This is an American uh, flag bone, actually, with the uh, 22 bullet uh, as a shield. Uh, this is a lock back knife, but it's got this just awesome little spear point. This is actually a very underrated knife. Um, I would have put this one on here, but it's a lock back knife. So I didn't put it with the traditional folders, but it is a very awesome knife. So as you can tell, you know, Tony Bowes, he had, he was a smart man. He had some very neat, different designs for knives. Um, but this was definitely the cream of the crop when it came to him. Um, I think the back pocket is just a beautiful knife. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you all for watching. Uh, I just wanted to show you all these knives. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to make a quick shout out to Tim's School of Fish. Um, you all might have heard of him. He's a knife content creator as well. Um, he recently um, found some of my videos on YouTube and was very, very nice and open to me um, and just welcoming me into the knife community. I've been here for a few months now, maybe getting close to about half a year on here. But I'm still new to it all, and it was really awesome of him, and I found it really kind that he, you know, tried to welcome me in, um, as well as many other content creators. So many, uh, you know, Big J's Knives, you, you got Doom Crew Outdoors, uh, Georgia Adventure, Randy, um, all these people, Erica's EDC, um, all these awesome content creators, you know, reaching out to me, you know, being really nice. But Tim especially has been very supportive. Uh, commenting on tons of my videos, you know, and he's also a big Miami Dolphins fan, just like me, um, which is awesome. We recently took a pretty pretty bad loss to the Chiefs today. We almost beat them, should have, should have beat them, but yeah, I just think we were very much common, and I just wanted to shout him out. If you all haven't heard of him, you should definitely go check him out. He loves, um, you know, he's into traditional folders, lockbacks, modern knives. He's got all stuff on his channel. I'm normally, you know, just talking about case and traditional knives, but he's got, you know, a ton of, you know, different stuff on his channel. So you should definitely go check him out. He's got some great videos and he's a very funny, cool guy. So I just wanted to shout him out. Um, you know, I've got, uh, also I wanted to say this for Doom Crew, be in prayer, uh, for Doom Crew Outdoors. Uh, he recently had a sister-in-law of his die. Um, so be in prayer for them um it's a really rough time for them so yeah keep them in your prayers um but yeah thank you all for watching um and i'll see you on the next one